Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today, another instance of a limit, a pullback or a push out or a pullback, um, kind of a gluing type thing. We'll see. Kind of the first time we see faces in a universal type of relation, type of diagram, and we'll see what actually happens. Um, but let, let's recall what we've seen so far. So we had products and co products, which were those uh, kind of objects together with the arrows here in the middle and kind of this part here and they were kind of uniquely uh, were asked for a universal property by kind of uniquely determining a certain arrow either incoming or outgoing and it was this idea that these are completely determined by what happens on the left and what happens on the right and kind of what my story for today is that these things don't have any faces. So the, the kind of the universal part is this dotted part. I kind of would like to ignore this. So the universal part usually always gives you faces, kind of ignore it, so kind of ignore it for now. Of course, it's very important, but for my story, let's just ignore it. Uh, just in the rest of the part, you just see this picture here, let's say, or uh, the other one, the other way around, of course, just this picture. And there are no faces, right? It's just a line if you want. Uh, Certainly just, just a stupid kind of little line type thing. Um, so there are no faces and that's kind of why it is so free in a certain sense. You just stick things together and you get a, a direct sum, for example, in vector spaces. So they are rather naive constructions if you want. And in real life, and in this example, what I'm going to explain mostly in topology, um, usually it's not as naive and you have some kind of some relations going on. And whenever you see faces, uh, so faces in a, a kind of a limit in this abstract setup of universal properties, you will have some relations and it gets a little bit more complicated. And that's why uh, pushouts and pullbacks are a little bit more complicated than products and co-products or initial and terminal objects. But still, they have the very same kind of flavor, which we'll collect in a second or in, in another video in uh, limits. But for now, it's just this idea that now we see faces. So for example, so actually the whole idea comes from topology. So there's this hemisphere picture of, of dn. So here's my uh, d2, uh, s2, sorry. This is my s2. And s2 has this nice decomposition in, into a d2, the northern hemisphere, and the d2, the southern hemisphere. And they are glued together along an s1, kind of the equator, right? So you can form a ball. Right, a hollow ball, there's air inside, by bringing together uh, like this like earth type picture, a northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, and you glue them like, together along a circle. This is this idea of uh, well, constructing the ball from a disc, another disc, and a smaller ball. So S1 is this kind of this type of smaller ball. This is hemisphere picture. And what you would write down here is this funny diagram. So that's what people did. Uh, when they consider topology, you have S1, you have inclusions of S1 either in the bottom or in the top, of course, and you have this gluing of the D ends together, and this forms this funny diagram. And as you can see here, this has now a face, and the gluing is kind of this relation um, that you add here to the whole process. So Sn, what I'm saying here is Sn is not equal to the naive construction, Dn cross Dn, that's just not true, but it's kind of this gluing construction that you see here. And it kind of comes from that in the corresponding diagram, right? We're doing category theory. We're up to looking for diagrams. The corresponding diagram has a face. So the face kind of forces the relation uh, among us. And this is not, not just the same in topology, but if we would do the same in vector spaces, you would draw the same diagram. So you would draw this x, y, z diagram. So this was uh, s n minus one before, or s one or whatever. This was d n. This is d n, and this is whatever um, s n. It's kind of the same picture. You have those maps between vector spaces, and you have some other maps, and you have some kind of this universal type of object. And it's not quite a direct sum because you would see now here a face, and this face forces it to be a direct sum with gluing. And the definition is just what I've written down here. So uh, it's a direct sum of x and z. So just take the direct sum here. But it's not quite the direct sum. That would just be uh, kind of the faceless. right? This would be this picture here. Uh, but now we have a face. 
So you glue them together and you identify a certain certain vectors depending on f and g. So um, for x equals zero, this is just a direct sum because then you kind of kill the face here, but in general, it's not. So it's this direct sum with uh, relation. And the relation comes from the fact that in this universal type of diagram, which we hopefully have seen enough examples by now in this universal type of diagram, um, there is a face. Faces force relations among us. And yeah, so if you believe that this strategy works and you have just verified that it works in topological spaces by the hemisphere picture or in vector spaces by the slightly strange direct sum construction. And well, we have seen examples like the initial and the terminal object, the product and the co-product. Then you would write down the corresponding definition and here you go. Uh, it's the usual one. So the red part is uh, actually either the pullback or the push out. So I showed you actually the push out. It's a little bit nicer. I showed you this picture, um, but there's of course also the dual picture and it's a square. It's now a square. This is where the face comes from. It's now a square and it's determined by those corresponding universal properties. Keep in mind, I say this again, that it's really the whole red part. It's not just an object. It's an object together with arrows and satisfying the dotted thing. So the dotted universal type of property. Um, but the point that I wanted to make here that in explicit constructions, usually these have relations because you see a square here, which is kind of a, a face, of course, in the diagram and the face forces relation among us uh, upon, upon this construction. Um, and, and as usual, they might not exist or when they exist, they're unique up to unique isomorphism, which kind of explains why they are so important um, as soon as they exist. And another example from topology. So those notions really come from topology. Why? Well, I said it again, because if a face and the face corresponds to the type of a gluing operation and the gluing operation sounds very topological to me. Um, anyway, so it, there's this theorem that is called Seifert and Van Gumpen. If you don't know what it is, you can just ignore this slide. If you've seen it before, then actually it is a push out and it's a push out in the category of groups. Uh, so in the category of groups, so group, um, the push out is given by this amalgamation product. It's a free thing, right? But there's a face, so it's a free thing with relations. And that's exactly how uh, Seifert and Van Kampen comes about. It's a push out in the category of groups. And the corresponding push out, as I said, is this uh, product with amalgamation. Anyway, so um, the idea for push outs and pullbacks is exactly the same as for initial and terminal objects. They're determined by a certain type of diagram and a certain type of universal property. And if they exist, they might not exist, but if they exist, they're unique up to unique isomorphism, which kind of explains uh, why they are so important, right? If they exist, then they're unique, right? That's the whole point. And they tend to exist quite often, or in particular in topology, because kind of the difference here between the products, the co-products, initial objects, the terminal objects, and the push-outs and the pullbacks is it's the, the push-outs and pullbacks have faces. And faces usually means you have some relations going, going on because you need things to commute, right? So you have two arrows, two ways to go around the, uh, the square, and you want those two ways to be the same. So you need to force some relation among your construction. And that when you get kind of this product with amalgamation, you get this direct sum with kind of identifying F and G, you get the hemisphere picture for um, the topological spaces and so on. So faces in those diagrams mean some version of gluing, some version of relations, some version of identifying information. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.